in the Indian passenger vehicle market, the French brand Citroën made an entry with a top-down approach with the C5 Aircross, a diesel SUV. In the electric uh, vehicle, emerging electric vehicle segment, the brand is taking a bottom-up approach. To tell us more about the strategy for Citroën as well as as overall group Stellantis in India, I have with me Roland Bushara, CEO and Managing Director of uh, Citroën uh, of Stellantis India, and Saurabh Bhatsa, who is the uh, head of brand Citroën in India. So, gentlemen, thank you for talking to ET Auto. First of all, Rolo, this one sits at the bottom end of the emerging uh, passenger electric passenger vehicle market. In fact, this is set to be the second one uh, in this space, uh, in the more affordable range, so to speak. So, what what scope do you see for this segment of the uh, electric vehicle uh, market in India and for, for the EC3? Uh, what kind of goals would you have? Uh, first of all, uh, I won't speak about the bottom end. It's a BH hatchback, uh, which is going to be positioned as it is in the EV market. And within this kind of segment for EVs, there are not so many. So uh, uh, it is why I say many times that uh, we'll move from a newcomer from the overall market to a key player, what is going to be for this car, which I believe is bringing something new in this market in terms of affordability and as well uh, uh, in terms of comfort, comfort being the DNA of Citroën. As probably you have all of you noticed, the comfort, the suspension are still as good than the DNA of Citroën that we find in the, in the Citroën. So really, with this car, we'll become a, a key player in this kind of segment, which is, and which is going to even increase as a mainstream segment within the EV vehicle. Right. So when you say key player, is the target to be the number one player in this segment? Because uh, as uh, no, uh, Mr. Carlos Tavares, uh, the Celantis Group CEO mentioned, that India, the middle class, uh, consumer base will play a very, very key role in Stellantis' uh, story in India, the journey in India. And this one looks like it, it is going to kind of you know, woo that, that set of customers majorly. I can appreciate this for this car being the number, number one, but at this stage, leave it as a key player. Uh, then uh, the, the, the result will prove uh, if we can be the number one. Right. Uh, Saurabh, uh, you know, uh, this you are kind of, you know, uh, kind of pitching as the more affordable EV in the uh, Indian passenger, uh, passenger, electric passenger vehicle market. Could this be, would you like this to be the most affordable one? Well, uh, I think like Roland said, what's important is this is the first B hatch which is getting electrified. Um, it also comes with all the uh, Citroen DNA on styling and comfort. Uh, it comes with a very handsome range of 320 kilometers, air is certified, and um, uh, the package is very wholesome. It will be affordable, and I don't want to say that it will be the most affordable or it will be the not be the most affordable, but yes, it will be a very affordable um, uh, EV in the space. Uh, and as this, this space, as in the electric passenger vehicle mar uh, market evolves in India, do you see the composition uh, replicating more or less the same as the conventional ICE vehicle wherein the sub-4 meter having a lion's share? Well, if you look at Indian markets, it's very unique with its sub-4 meter formula that we have in India. Uh, but, which, which, uh, unlike, which but unlike the, that, uh, uh, this, uh, that segment, this one, there's no taxation benefits True. unlike that. True. So, what I'm trying to say is, even when you look at an ICE versus EV, within the same segment, you have a taxation difference between an ICE and an EV. Uh, which is where the, the mass adoption will have to start from a segment which is sub-4. And, and that will contribute to the larger volume adoption in, in the country for sure. We have some very able, very expensive EVs in the market. And, and uh, at, at the same point, the volumes are very small. If you want to look at uh, larger high-scale uh, EV adoption in the country, given the structure of the market, which is unique to India, and I keep saying it's unique to India because it is unique to India, the adoption of uh, the EVs in the sub-4 meter will drive uh, the overall uh, demand in the market. Right, and also uh, a role in terms of uh, for the overall Stellantis group, uh, the you know uh, in the future, which is set to be all electric. Uh, Citroen, I understand, will drive the will be the leader in terms of the volume game. So therefore, uh, and uh, right now you are making an early move. You are one of the early movers. So uh, what uh, would you look at? What kind of a run rate would you look at to introduce uh, electrics 
in the volume segment? Well, first of all, uh, the overall uh, Stellantis brand are engaged in this kind of electrification. Okay, Citroën is one of the brand, and it is a brand that we are selling in India. And uh, EC3 uh, is uh, the first one that we are launching. Let's see uh, what the, the way the market in India will evolve uh, in order uh, to adapt our strategy, which is ready, whatever the kind of electrification uh, to uh, be introduced in India. But uh, hybrids is not part of your electrification uh, uh, strategy here. We have uh, actually all this uh, technology ready. PHEV, BEV, uh, get ready. Uh, we will adapt ourselves to the market evolution. At this stage, we are launching the EV EC3. Let's see the way the market will react. But again, we are ready to launch uh, uh, any uh, kind of EV technology. And uh, talking about the other brand under Stellantis, the Jeep brand, no, when, do, when does it start the electri electrification journey in India? As I said, Stellantis has uh, several brands and uh, the electrification uh, technology are ready for all the brands, including, obviously, uh, as you know, Jeep. Concerning Jeep in India, this is always going to evolve. Uh, and then, as I said, we are uh, get ready to introduce if needed. And uh, under the Day Forward strategy, uh, which is the vision for 2030 for Stellantis Group, uh, you're looking at uh, achieving 100% of your sales from uh, battery electrics in your home region of uh, Europe and then 50% uh, in USA. What could be the share in India, let's say? But you know, uh, the share of India is going very independent about the way that the market is going to evolve. Uh, either market uh, by 25 or between 25 and 30 is going to achieve between 10 and 15 percent of the total TIV. That is really dependent on many things. The EV infrastructure, the government as well uh, uh, guideline and our ability to follow. So, uh, and the over, I mean, I, we follow as all of all OEM. Uh, um, let's say that uh, uh, we want to be among the key players in this kind of market. We are proving it today with the EC3 and the uh, BH. And the, the way that the market will evolve, uh, we, will be, uh, we will adapt ourselves. You know that uh, the government, Indian government launched the production link incentive, of which we are part of the main applicant and which has been uh, recorded. So means that we are getting ready uh, to evolve all along the TIV of the EV will will move on in India. And would that would the production strategy also involve making uh, India an export base for EVs? That's first of all we are going to be focused on India and then we will see uh, any uh, any opportunities. And uh, sort of uh, in terms of uh, the 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 game uh, the passenger the industry is becoming increasing collaborative in nature increasingly uh, collaborative in nature driven mainly by the electrification mega trend and so uh, uh, which is very key for sustainability so from that perspective what kind of collaborations uh, would you look at and or are you already in talks with I think what we are trying to do is uh, working on infrastructure partnerships. Um, and, and that's where we are bringing alive all the cohesiveness. First of all, you know, we've digitized the complete consumer journey and we continue to focus on that and enhance that. We have some very able Indian partners uh, who are working with us on that. The second is on the EV side, we are uh, <coughs> investing a lot of effort in terms of creating charging infrastructure at our showrooms. That charging infrastructure uh, will be brand agnostic. That means other brands are welcome to, you know, have their vehicle charged at the showrooms. And we have very recently uh, partnered with uh, GOPP in, uh, in, in this particular area. Uh, the third field is where we are developing connectivity options uh, for, for uh, our consumers. And that's where, again, we are investing into a lot of uh, partnerships which are in India, where we are developing connectivity options and taking to the consumer. Now, for example, the My Citroen Connect app that we are going to be rolling out with the EC3, uh, you will be able to see the complete uh, entire GOPP charging network on that app. So these are the kind of integrations that we're bringing alive in terms of partnerships that we're putting together. Along with this, on the consumer side, uh, on the services side, we have some very able partners through whom we are providing, for example, the 180-minute uh, roadside assistance in the country. Now, in a country the size of India, providing assistance in 180 minutes, and with the EC3, we'll also provide electric assistance uh, in terms of charging uh, for the consumers. These are some significant partnerships that we are building in. On the finance and insurance side, we have some very important partners who are uh, helping us with our uh, dealer retail floor funding. 
also in insurances for the ICE versions and the electric versions. Along with this, obviously, now when you're introducing new technology, there's a need for uh, evolving uh, extended warranties, mm -hmm. uh, AMCs. Those kind of supports are already being provided by our uh, existing partners. So right. that's a lot of different partnerships that we're bringing in, not necessarily in, in OEM technology, but uh, collaborative approach on a lot of other uh, associative partnerships where uh, the consumers will benefit from. And talking, to, uh, talking about technology, in the battery technology, let's say in the EC3, you have, you have opted for the LFP. Uh, well, uh, relatively safer and more friendly, let's say, for tropical uh, environments, perhaps, but uh, doesn't score as much as uh, NMC when it comes to energy density. Uh, would you stick to that uh, battery chemistry for the uh, uh, other EVs or well, would there be a mix? Uh, we are launching it with, we have a prismatic cell structure inside the LFP battery pack that we have and that's what kind of differentiates the way we package the energy density inside the pack that we have. Uh, with that, we are able to give you a better range. Um, and, and uh, performance with the battery pack that goes on the EC3. What's really important to understand is that this platform was configured to be powertrain agnostic. That means you could put an ICE engine on it or you could put a battery uh, and an electric powertrain on it. Which is where we have uh, started reaping the benefit of configuring it long ahead when we were configuring the platform. And today we are able to go to the market uh, in the fastest possible time between an ICE and EV. Six months, we are the first OEMs in the country to do that. And also at the same point in time, we are able to offer a very competitive package for our consumers, both in terms of performance and cost and pricing that you will soon uh, get to see from. Pricing, uh, sub-10 lakh. <laughs> no comments on that, but it will be an exciting package. Lastly, uh, Roland, uh, you also indicated that you know, uh, the third model on the same platform is due later this year. Uh, so uh, would, it, would it still st stick to the sub-4 meter or would it be above that? Let's keep the surprise uh, to meet again <laughs> soon. <laughs> okay, I'm sure we, we look forward to that, but uh, yeah. all the best with the EC3. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, uh, you heard uh, Roland Bashara and Saurabh Batsa sharing the overall strategy for the Citroen brand as well as the Stellantis group in India. Thank you for watching. Thank you.